corporate world for over 35 years. His published books include the Brooker Daily Gratitude Journal, Happiness Starts with Gratitude, and Gratitude Nuggets to Chew On. He was featured on New Day with Marker Clarkson on King Fly TV and recently shared the stage with Bill Gates Sr. at a regional conference. With over 450 gratitude videos posted on YouTube, thousands have seen his message and he is now considered a leading authority on gratitude and how living a life of gratitude can enhance and improve your life. So welcome to your friend, that gratitude guy, David Brook. Thank you, Brenna. How many people were here last year when I spoke last year? So for about half the group, I've got a lot of changes. So I don't want you to think, oh God, I got to hear that guy again. I will say this, the typical top I, talk I give is called Happiness Starts With Gratitude. That's one of the books that I've done. And I've heard the theme of happiness talked about quite a bit this morning. Anything from the neat things about Annie to the sun that's out to the beautiful weather. I came up on the ferry yesterday and how can you not be happy coming across and a ferry and uh, sun and blue sky like that. So, but I will ask the one question I always start with because I'm always curious. How many people here have suffered a significant personal loss in your life? See, that's like, thank you, that's like 90%. Now I've started doing school commencement speeches. And they're 18, 19 years old and then I go up and I do rest homes and they're 80, 90 year old people. But it's anywhere from 50% to 90%. It's never much less than half, even these kids in these high schools. And I thought about this whole concept of happiness and the reason for those of you when I start talking to these clubs for the second time and I am a member of Seattle Four and I'm very blessed and fortunate to go to a lot of Rotary Clubs and, and uh, Qantas and Lions and Chambers and things like that but when I lost my wife 15 years ago and my mom and dad and so much of my life was defined by death and people ask you a lot about well gosh tell me about your life tell me about this but unfortunately for me a lot of it was about the fact that so many people had died from my wife to my folks as I mentioned so happiness is a choice and I heard a quote the other day from John Lennon that was really cool he said when he was uh, or when he had been five years old his mother said to him your goal in life is to be happy so he thought about that and John Lennon wrote some incredible music by himself and with the Beatles so then he goes to school and the teacher says, what do you want to be when you grow up? And he goes, happy. And he looks at the teacher and the teacher looks at him and the teacher says, you don't understand the assignment. And he goes, well, you don't understand life. <laughs> Pretty good for a kid in school. But I do think so much of it has to do with how we look at something. And one of the things I'm going to talk about a little bit got 20 25 minutes this morning that's different from the last time I saw you is I've started to do a lot of two-minute videos I told Brenda I'm gonna do one with her today and we're gonna just hop out and have the uh, harbor in the background two minutes what are you grateful for and I'll tell you about some of the folks that I've done in the last year since I've seen you last and some of the things they've said and some of where they've come from and how happiness and gratitude have really delivered them to a much better place and I'm just not really sure if you can have happiness without gratitude maybe maybe not I'm not sure but so much of it comes back to how you look at it and this is something I talked about last year whether it's death or what happened in 2008 or all the things that have happened to us it's your choice and you can go left or right and it is again how we look at it so I'd like you to all stand up just for a second I love to do this first thing and we've had a nice breakfast with a lot of meat I heard that theme through the whole thing that was that was pretty exciting and the uh, the uh, French toast thing was solid that was really good so raise your right hand and start turning in a clockwise manner there's a clock right there in case anybody's uncertain trust me in the high schools nobody knows what clockwise is they go I just have numbers so just clockwise and just keep it turning clockwise now just start bringing it down real slowly to about your forehead your eyes your chin your chest and now your waist now what direction is it going counterclockwise what's your name What's your name? Bill. Bill. Thank you, Bill. Okay, oh, you can sit down. Thank you, Bill. There's always, <laughs> and there's always, this is my abs, so I just barely get started. It's my favorite thing. There's always a few people going, what the hell just happened? <laughs> and I have these fraternity brothers I reference once in a while that are always giving me a hard time. And they go, you know, we've seen your little talk. We're not that impressed, frankly. And I go, well, that's great. But then they turn around and ask me, how does this thing work? Well, if you're not so impressed, how'd you have to ask about this? You're a freaking PhD. 
and one of them is a master's. But it's just this way of showing it depends on how you look at something. And one of the things that I talk about, I'm blessed enough, I just spoke at the conference, got to speak with Mr. Gates Sr. and a lot of really peep, neat people up in Vancouver. Our conference 5030 was last weekend. But it is a choice and it depends on how you look at it. And I got to do a couple of breakouts and speak on the stage. And I always talk about five things. And those of you that were here last year may or may not remember, but it's embracing gratitude and understanding how gratitude can change your life and navigate through the toughest. Because let's face it, life is like this. And when I talk to these commencement kids, I always think, what did I want to hear when I was 18 from a 64-year-old? What would I like to know back then that might have helped me? Well, one of them is, is life's like this. This is a lot of fun. This isn't. This is where everybody wants to get back to again. But this is where the lessons are learned down here. And by, by my talk, gratitude and embracing gratitude, and I'll talk about a gratitude journal and a few other things, it's just a tool and a toolkit to help people. And I look at Rotary, I'm very proud to be a Rotarian. I met some phenomenal people up at Vancouver. Service above self. Well, you know, if you really want to help yourself, I think the best method is to help other people. It just seems to make the most sense. So I start with embracing gratitude, then I talk about never giving up. I talk about making room for gratitude, get a gratitude journal, and finally sharing gratitude. Because so when you find something you're really excited about, you want to share it. So what I want to start, I want to start and I'm going to do something a little different. Everybody should have a piece of paper on your desk, on your table, and have a feeling that some of them don't. So, and I apologize for, I'm going to ask you to tear those in half, if you would. So who all needs paper here? Because I know there's a couple tables in the back. And just take one of these and just neatly tear them in half if you can, because you're going to need two pieces of paper. And again, I'm sorry for this. I handed out all these cards up at the Rotary Conference. And I have these really cute little 3 by 5 cards. Anybody else? And you're going to need a pen too, so if you have a pen, if not, raise your hand. I've got pens up top. Pen? Okay. Hold on a second. There's one there. How many pens here? Where's my hall monitor when I need it? I'm all this prepared. I'm good. <laughs> You're good. Okay. Oh, that'd be great. Thank you. Okay, thank you. And there's a little more paper. Thank you, Barbara. Okay, Barbara's got extra pens, and I handed out a whole bunch of. I had these really cool three by five cards at the conference, and that was just ended up home a couple days ago. So I neglected to get some new. So take one of the pieces of paper, if you would, and I need you to pick a partner. So most of you should have a partner, somebody, if you've not, just move to another table. And what I'd like you to write at the top of that piece of paper, first thing on the upper left hand corner, write, I see you as. I see you as, and you can do a colon or a couple of dots or what have you. And then put the person that is your partner, put their name to the right of I see you as. And then down at the bottom, either sign or write your name. Mike, do you not have a partner? Is he hooked? Oh, perfect. Perfect. All right, and here's what I'm going to do. I'm just, I, sometimes I give a couple, I'm going to give you 60 seconds, and this is what I want you to do. Whether you know that person or not, I just met Mark yesterday, Mark Wagner yesterday, and I was, where was, um, where's Mary? There's Mary. And um, Gretchen, I remember you from last year. And whether you know that person or not, you have an impression of what they are to you. Do they look happy or are they passionate or whatever? And I want you to write as fast as you can in 60 seconds, I see you as, and write about that person that's your partner, and you can start right now. About 20 seconds. <laughs> yeah. 
Okay, and stop. Now I want you to read what you wrote and tell that person what you wrote about him. like you to give the other person the card or the paper that you wrote about them, let them keep it. So when you look at something and somebody says, I could overhear a few conversations, I see you as passionate, as driven, as energetic, as fun loving, as whatever it might be, that's one of the ways I want to explain to people, if you saw that every day, I have a, pe I have a feeling a lot of people will hang on to that piece of paper. Well, when you embrace gratitude and you see what's positive in this world, focusing on everything we have versus what we don't have, that's what that type of thing will do for you. And as I said, I have a feeling a few people are going to hang on to those pieces of paper. I will say this, I mentioned I do commencements every once in a while. I tried it in high schools and it doesn't work there because they go, I, I see you as an idiot. So <laughs> that wasn't, that wasn't, of course, I'm sure they were texting it because they didn't want to write it or whatever. But, uh, but at least for our range, right, the hair is from dark to gray or whatever, I think people kind of understand it. So, but I really like to get across to people that you have a choice and you can go left or right in this road. And if you see people seeing, seeing you, and I hear unbelievable words I wouldn't even have thought of, and fun-loving, and energy, and all these different words that people describe, and in some cases they haven't even met somebody. I met Mark last night, and within 30 seconds, I thought, what a cool guy. It doesn't take very long. It really doesn't. And that's that idea about you get that choice. And I meet a lot of people when I get up to these different clubs, I've probably spoken to three quarters of the Rotary clubs in 5030 and a lot of other ones and you just meet the neatest people but certain areas are different where I think people are happier up here a lot of people up here in the San Juans retire it's beautiful weather it's sort of banana belt that kind of thing but regardless it's a choice that you have so I just want you to keep that in mind and I think the second thing I always talk about is it takes as long as it takes I'm not a fan of PowerPoint I love to look at people and be able to see what they're thinking. And when I was up at the conference, I was really, really fortunate to have a lot of people come up to me afterwards and talk about loss in their life. And can you tell me what might work? And can I write in a gratitude drill? Some had lost their son. Some had lost their husbands or spouses. What have you? And how are you coping with it? Because to me, what gratitude has really become for me is a healthy coping mechanism in a world of many, many deadly destructive ones. And for those of you that were here last year that may remember, my wife died at 38 years old of a prescription pill overdose. And my boys were 4 and 14 at the time. They're now 19 and 29, just about to turn 29, or excuse me, 30 and 20. And it was one of the biggest ways, if not the biggest way, that I got through this and decided it was worth it and not go try to find some bridge or what have you, as a lot of people do in one form or another. But it does take as long as it takes. I did a church recently and they did do some slides and I don't like PowerPoint because you don't get to look at people but they flashed a picture of KFC's founder Colonel Sanders and of course typical somebody yells out of the audience I'm hungry and I go that's not the point KFC but I said the guy's 64 that's how old I am that's when he started KFC and I know you're thinking gosh this guy didn't look day over 63 I know I look for decent but anyway but the point it doesn't matter and then sometimes, even on some of the exercises I do, people are like looking at other people. I go, don't be looking at them. This is about you. This is your journey. What is your opportunity? What is your path in life? And it's so interesting to see all the different paths that people go. And you hear just incredible stories. But it's your journey, and it takes as long as it takes. And as Winston Churchill said, you just can't ever, ever, ever give up. 
And it kind of brings to mind the story. I always really respect people that keep trying. There was a gal I worked with years ago, and I used to manage Nordstrom stores, as you heard in the bio, and manage these big box stores, Lowe's, and tons and tons of employees. And I always fairly feel as there's 20 employees that'll tell you they'll do something, there's one that does. It just always seemed to me it was one out of 20. And I had this gal that was working for me, and gosh, she had kind of a tough life and things, and she just, uh, I, I don't even know, maybe some abuse in the family, but anyway, she, she ends up getting pregnant, and she says, I have to move, and I'm going to go down and live with my mom and have this baby. It was just kind of a mess. She says, but I'm going to change my life, because I know how you are, David. I'm going to be the one. I'm not going to be the 19. I promise you I will be the one, not the 19. So then she moves to Texas to have the baby and all this kind of stuff, and I forget about her. And she calls me one day. David, it's Tracy. I just want to call and tell you that what you said to me meant a lot. I said, great, I'd kind of forgotten. She goes, I want you to know I've had my baby. His name is Johnny, I think it was. And uh, I said, well, that's great, happy, I'm happy for you, good for you. She goes, I'm going to tell you, I'm going to prove you different. She goes, I found a new guy too, he's really cool. And I said, what's his name? His name's Bill. What's Bill do? Well, he's on work release right now. <laughs> and I just remembered, gosh, God bless you trying, you know. I'm not sure that's kind of the path we wanted. But I look at people, and especially when I get to do longer workshops, and I just love to look at eyes and ask people, are you the one or are you the 19? And I tell people, like, I'll go on radio when I'm doing, like, a little radio thing, and, and I'll get to this gratitude journal in a second. I go, you don't have to do it. You don't have to do the gratitude journal. But I ask you, it's just something you can try if you struggle. And a lot of people struggle. And I notice that people tend to give up. And if people had given up, we wouldn't have had Disneyland, because Walt Disney had to go to hundreds of banks, and we wouldn't have had the Rocky films, because Stallone couldn't, couldn't find financing. There's all these examples. So... I urge people to just remember it gets better. And when I go into some in more depth, which I don't as much anymore about all the loss that I suffered, it would have been very easy for me to be living under a bridge, drinking a bottle of whiskey like a few people I've seen, or go jump off that bridge. But I chose not to. And when you have some tools like gratitude and community and friends and things like Rotary, it can be very supportive through going through tough times. So the next thing I talk about is get rid of the junk in your brain I cannot get over the amount of crud people keep in their brain and when you go out to this car today and you see that car and the windshields about like this two feet deep and it's about four feet wide notice how big it is and then notice the size of the rearview mirror it's about like this that's about 200 to 1 and I tell people mostly look in front and look at what's coming for you. Now, if you see flashing blue lights in here, I get it, you gotta pull over, but mostly pay attention to what's in front of you. I'm fascinated by how many people drive over junk in their life, pick it up, put it back in front of them, drive over it again. And I'll give you the number one thing I hear is ex-spouses. Well, you don't understand, Dave, if it wasn't for that guy, this name, that name, whatever, fill in the blank. And I go, well, I'm sure that's very difficult. Um, when did you get divorced? 1984. <laughs> so you're working on 30 years. We're still blaming him or her. It's junk. You've got to get rid of it. And you've got to make room for good stuff in your brain. And the number one thing that has made such a difference for me has been a gratitude journal. And I, have, I bought a gratitude journal on Amazon. How many people have ever heard of a gratitude journal? It's a pretty good number. I'd never heard of one. I'd heard of a journal and a diary. And I, um, I got it and I started writing in it and I noticed all these big differences. And then I made my own and I sell my own but I tell people, you can buy it or I don't care if you get a spiral notebook. It takes five minutes a day. And my saying about it is, if you think about it, it's like a dream. If you talk about it, it inspires you. But if you write about it, it empowers you. And there's always kids in the audience do you have an app? <laughs> Are you with this, the next century here? Well, the funny thing is, I actually have an app. <laughs> it's right on my phone, the Brooker's Daily Gratitude Journal. And you can press it. I'm so grateful I had the opportunity to say hello to Gretchen again. And you press, and it, it just types it. But it's not the same. It's just not the same. There's something about 
getting a thought in this CPU up here we call our brain that goes to our heart. I'm grateful for Brenda for asking me back to speak again. I'm grateful for Becky for the great uh, opportunity to be in her restaurant to have the food last night, this morning. All those things goes through this heart, to the arm, the hand, the pen, the paper, and you write it down. And it takes five minutes a day. And it makes such a huge difference. So here's what I'm going to do. Grab your other piece of paper, if you would. I was so prepared with my pre-done three by five cards here, I do apologize. And before you write in, I want to talk just a little bit about the way this journal works. And you're going to write something on that paper in a second, but I just have the day and the date and I have a daily number. We'll talk about that in a second. There's a couple of lines that say special occasions, so you don't have to have a diary. Here's what you're grateful for, here's the highlight of your day, and here's what you're going to be grateful for tomorrow. I've timed this a ton of times, takes five minutes. And what you're grateful for tomorrow, you get to write as your prefrontal cortex contains your subconscious mind. It cannot distinguish distinguish uh, between what's happened and what actually is going to happen. So I was writing two weeks ago how grateful I was for the opportunity to be speaking at the conference and getting to speak with Mr. Gates and Craig Kielberg and a bunch of really cool people and how I was grateful for the success and I did two workshops and they were standing room only and I'd already kind of, kind of pre-programmed so it was really cool. But the daily number is what I want to talk about right now and then we're going to write some things here. The daily number is 10 is the best day of your life, 1 is the worst day. And it could be anything in between. And I want you to think right now, and this is where every one of you is just an individual, doesn't matter if you're with a friend or spouse or whoever, what's your number right at this very moment? And no halves, you have to write this down because we're just going to do it, I'll have you write something in just a second. But I want you to think about what that number is. So by show of hands, if you're a 1 to 5, I don't want you to raise your hands because I don't want anybody to be embarrassed this happened. Yeah. So, 10 is the best day of your life, 1 is the worst. Because I mean sometimes they do it backwards. So, so just get whatever that number is in your head. And as I said, if it's your 1 to 5, don't raise your hand because if somebody's having a hard day, I'm not interested in embarrassing anybody. But by show of hands, now that you have that number, how many people here are a 6? 2 or 3? 7? Oh, quite a few. 8? Wow, great number. Nines? Two? And any tens? Okay, it's about normal. Here's what I'd like you to do. On that piece of paper, I want you to write, if you could only pick one thing in your life you're grateful for, I want you to write down what it is. It could be a person, a name, it could be a sentence, anything. Just take a second, if you only pick one thing. And then as soon as you're done with that, for those of you that are quick, if you could pick a second thing, what would that be? Write that down. Second thing you're most grateful for. All right, and third and lastly, write down what was the highlight of your day yesterday? What was the best thing that happened to you yesterday? Okay, now, a lot of people are quicker than others, so just reread what you wrote and really think about it. The thing you're the most grateful for, the second thing you're most grateful for, and the best thing that happened to you yesterday, and just sort of plug that into your brain. And just notice if you see any shift in how you're viewing things, because I'm going to check the numbers again. So once again, by show of hands, one to five, don't raise your hand. How many people are six? Perfect. Sevens, pretty good number. Eights, wow. Nines, and any tens, perfect. So you increase probably three or four people in every one of those numbers. And that's like 30 seconds. So when you get to write down for five minutes every single day, I tell people, you can tell I'm extremely passionate about it. I've watched so many people die, it makes me want to lose my lunch. Of the 20 or 30 people that died in my life, half of them were of their own hand. My father was a suicide. I've had two or three other suicides pills. It's ridiculous to me. Suicide is a permanent solution to a temporary problem. And so when you write that down, you can see just the effect there in 30 to 60 seconds. And I tell people, they don't have to do it. It's okay. I'm just telling them it's a healthy coping mechanism. Get up, 
brush your teeth, take your shower, shave, get dressed, write in your gratitude journal. It's become so important to me. I have my journal with me and people, and I always, they last about three or four months and they'll, you mind if I look at it? And I go, sure. And they go, wow, you write in this every day. Have you been listening to the presentation? Have you like, have you, know, have you heard what I've said or what have you? I mean, it makes sense to me. But it makes such a big difference. I will tell you also why it was so powerful for me. My mother died of cancer. As I said, I've has suffered many, many losses. And before that, she was manic depressive. Bipolar, they call it today. So when I was back at the University of Washington, I was seven, well, act happened, to, happened when I was in high school too, 16, 17, 18. She would call me on the phone and she'd hold the phone like this and she'd take out her little sleepy pills and she'd go like this. You either come over right now or I will eat this entire bottle of pills and I'll be gone by the time you get here. I thought, you gotta be kidding me. What am I supposed to do? There was five of us. I was the strongest of the five kids. So I would tell Mr. Gallup, I gotta leave. My mom doesn't feel good. And I'd go over there and I'd see her. Then eventually she got some lithium and things and then she died of cancer. But I think I got a little bit of that bipolar stuff. And because Dana died of a prescription pill overdose, I'll be doggone if I'm gonna take pills. And a lot of my friends too, I've lost them to liver stuff from booze, coke, it's just ridiculous. I wake up one day about a year ago and I'm a two. So now that you kind of get that number business. And I'm usually a seven, eight, nine, ten guy. And I was right in that, it makes such a huge difference. And I know I was really in trouble. So I went down to Starbucks and I talk, took my journal, I didn't even take a shower, he's got some sweats on and I wrote in my journal everything I was grateful for. And it might even have been a sunny day. When you're depressed and you're down, even the sun doesn't always help you, but you gotta focus on it and it can help. And that bumped me up to about a four or five. That day I was doing a talk, so I felt a little better, but that's not normally where I was residing. Drove up to Burlington Chamber, did the talks, about 200 people, it was a good sized audience. And after I was done, people come over, and if I sell books, that's fantastic. But really what I like is the stories they tell me. Never, not everybody wants to stand up in front of a group. And not everybody's going to risk being embarrassed in front of people. This gal comes up to me, and she's crying. My name's Janice. Can I give you a hug? Now, I'll tell you, being single, I always will pick up an extra hug, let me tell you. <laughs> but she gives me a hug, and she goes, you just changed my life. Now, I've heard that a lot since I've seen you folks last and do probably two or three of these a week. But I always say kind of the same thing. I don't think I changed your life. Thank you. But I think I just offered you something as a tool in this toolkit to kind of help you through this crazy thing called life. And we've all lost people. You saw how many people raised their hands, personal losses, everything. It's tough. And you need things to help you through it. I said, what is it that I said? I can't tell you. It's, I'm going to get choked up. One of your stories tell a lot of different stories depending on how much time I have. She says, I want to get a journal and a few other things. I said, great, thank you. Gave her another hug and she left. And so I walked out to my car, sat by myself in my car for a few minutes and I thought, have you ever wondered who your best friend is? If you want to know who your best friend is, who's the first person you call when you get really good or really bad news? I think that's one way to tell. So I wanted to call Connor, my four-year-old who's now 19, and I was going to call Kyle next. But I decided not to, and I just thought about it, and I went, my God, I'm a nine and a half right now. And I'd gone from a two to a four to a five by writing in my journal to a nine to nine and a half by helping this gal. And it really real, it made me realize I was managing a Lowe's store at the time. And I quit not so much after that, and I took the rearview mirror, and I just looked at myself in the rearview mirror, and I go, I'm so freaking proud of you for making a difference. You run this store, where's the lumber? I really don't care. Where's hammers and nails? Just ask somebody in hardware. I get to actually impact lives. And then once I'd been a guest at Rotary for years and joined Seattle four two or three years ago, you talk about a hand in the glove. What does Rotary do? Service above self. We get to help people. So you can do it personally, professionally, service organizations, everything. It's just incredible. So I tell people it's just a tool. You can try it. You don't have to try it. It's okay, but it really, really works. So I got about four or five minutes. I just well, actually I want to do one thing. If I can, would you be kind? Of, I want to give away a book. I always like to give away a book. So if you have business cards, I'd love you to pop a card in. I'm going to call a name here in just a second. And I do send out a video every Monday at 745. 
if you don't want the video, put an X on your card, because I don't want to send it to anybody that wants, but I want to, uh, I always like to give away one of my books, people that are here. And I will tell you, as Brenna is picking those up, how many people here have written a book? Wow, oh my gosh. Well, you guys know what that's like, and it's difficult. And especially to me, not only writing, but the editing and doing all that kind of thing. And I did a, a couple of uh, anthology things where you send in a, a story. And in my case, it was about gratitude. That's actually the other book. And talk about an effort and perseverance. I sent in 28 stories about gratitude. And I'd always get the email back, thank you, in the subject line, which meant I was rejected. And then I'd open it. You know, we appreciate your little story and everything, but um, it's um, not what we need. And then on the 28th or 29th one is when I got accepted and it said congratulations. And I got in the book. And so it really does, perfect, it really does come down to perseverance. And you just can't give up. So, uh, Rick Thompson. Perfect. Yeah. Whoa. <laughs> and, yeah, kind of kind of golf applause there, kind of rolling applause. Now, you. would you like a book or a journal? Another cup of coffee. Is <laughs> How about some more bacon? No, no, I like that's, it. This is beautiful. That's actually awesome. the newest journal. Wow. I can use this. Thing. Good. Thank Very you, Rick. And I'll tell you this, too. I, I'm just trying to help people to change lives and, and make a difference in things. And I did a talk, uh, where was in Yakima a couple months ago, and I always like to draw the cards and see if I can get somebody. And the gal's name is Sally. I'll never forget, and they clap. And, here comes Sally, and I give her the book, and, and I go, here you go. And she's walking away from the podium. It was kind of a higher deal. And I said, you know, if you'd like later, I'll sign that for you. She goes, that's okay. <laughs> I really, Sally, I really don't think I'm anything special. I'm just trying to do something a little bit. So a couple minutes left. How many people here since I've been talking over the last 20 minutes have used their cell phone? God, this is a perfect group. I'm telling you, I, I was at a group the other day. There's always like three or four people that raised their hand, and the guy goes, I did, but I typed in gratitude journal. I just want you to know. So here's what I want you to do, talking about sharing gratitude. Everybody grab your smartphone if you would. You, if you don't have one, it's okay. You get, there's another option on this, too, where you can tell. So here's what, for those of you, usually the majority of people have their phones or their tablets or what have you. This is called the four T's, because the last thing I want to wrap up on is sharing gratitude. It's all about sharing. And again, rotary, service above self, sharing, helping people. This is called the four T's. I want you to text, tweet, telephone, or tell somebody in your life how grateful you are to have them in your life. And I'll give you 60 seconds. For those who don't have the phone, you can tell somebody, you can write a note and send it to them later. So go, I'll give you 60 seconds. Most people text, because that's what seems to be the most common. about 15 seconds. Okay, and stop. And you can finish those later. Whichever form you're using. I was doing this, uh, it was a, in a school, it was, but it was older, it was adult education. It was a big group of, it's like a, what do you call that auditorium where there is the performing arts center and so I could I was doing it I could hear the people talking so a lot of people in that case most people text but somebody was using their phone so I could hear this gal right over right near kind of where Becky was and she goes I just want you to know I'm so grateful for you and I just I love you and I'm so I think I'm guessing it was her husband and she goes uh-huh I don't know some speaker just told me to call you and tell you I was grateful for you <laughs> just, no no, no, that's not, that, it's supposed to be your idea. It's not my idea. <laughs> I will wrap up by telling you there's many experiences I've had in my life I wasn't able to share them with other people. 
One of them was when I went skydiving and I made an appointment for eight. And uh, a couple guys bagged out the first couple days of the week. We were going Saturday, then Wednesday a couple called <coughs> and they're coughing and I can't make it. And finally I walk up to Issaquah skydiving and I go, hi, Brooke, party of eight for skydiving? <laughs> and he looks behind me, where are your friends? I went, I don't have any. <laughs> and uh, I went skydiving by myself. And I got the little picture and everything, but I never got to share it with anybody. So if you think of or remember nothing else I say today, for it's whether it's you or a family or a friend or anybody that's struggling, trauma of loss, life, struggles, work, jobs, whatever, off from the idea of embracing gratitude. And if they can write a gratitude journal or a spiral notebook, I can tell you it can transform and change a life. And I feel in my case, I don't think I'd be standing here if it wasn't for it. I think it saved mine and it can save a lot of people's lives. Thanks a lot, you guys. Yeah. Yeah, thank you for coming today. Thank oh, you. Uh, one of our Rotary Club pins. Oh, thank you. So, thank yeah. you, dear. Thank you. I'm going to turn thank on the camera. Um, any other announcements?